Layering PNGs in Silhouette Studio to create your own sublimation files is a lot easier than you may think. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success, and I do hope that you are going to join our little crafting community. We would absolutely love to have you. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take the PNG files from places like Creative Fabrica or the Silhouette Design Store and turn them into your own unique sublimation files or print and cut files, whatever you like. This is the tumbler wrap that I created for this lesson. It is super cute. And this is a glow in the dark tumbler. So stick around to the end to see it glowing. I can't wait. Now, if everybody is ready to learn something new, let's do this. In Silhouette Studio, I have my page set up for a letter size project. And I have brought in a couple of PNGs that I got from Creative Fabrica. And I will put a link in the description below if you want to snag these for yourself. My first thought was that it would be really cute to have the glitter drip up along the top of this design. But once I had it put together like this, I realized that the glitter just kind of drowned out the actual design for the tumbler. So at that point, I decided I was just going to go ahead and change the fill color in the drip. So let's select that. We can head up to the fill color. You can see that it's actually no fill as of right now because it's a picture. But if we click on this, we can grab the eyedropper and I'm going to make it the same color as the skull. And I think that that gives it just a little more cohesive look. I'm going to line the two up. Let's see, pull this over a bit so I can see the edge better. Okay, so line up the edges of these two and then I'm going to just scale it down a bit. Now it is the perfect size to wrap around the tumbler. I think that's still a bit drippy, if you will. So I'm going to shrink it up this way as well. And I think that looks good. Now you have two layers and you are starting to personalize your design. Now I want this to have a cute little saying right in this area, but I don't want that ghost to interfere I think it will look a bit too cluttered if he is still there. So I am going to zoom in just a bit and I'm going to grab the eraser and I am just going to erase this ghost right out of there. If you need to make more than one pass with the eraser, that's fine. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to control with the mouse but I want to make sure that I'm not getting any of the other design elements in this process. Now I'm going to grab the eraser one more time and I'm going to lower the size of it right here. Just drag that down a little bit and then I can come over and erase that last bit of the spider web. Now you can see that there is still this part here. I can just right click and delete that. You could leave this as is, but you run the risk of this background having a slightly different tint. And then you would see that you erased here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to just draw that out. It doesn't have to be the exact size. And as a matter of fact, you can select the main PNG and the rectangle and center them so that this one is not hanging over the edge. Now let's select this, right click and send that to the back. And now it's much worse. <laughs> That's okay. What we're going to do is come up here again to the color selector. Let's grab our eyedropper and we're just going to click right on the white area. And now it will be the same exact color and you won't see any difference in the spot that we erased. Let's work on our saying for the tumbler. This is Boo Sheet. Okay. Of course, this color and font are not really working with this design. I'm going to select all of this, 
come over to the textile panel and I am going to go with PN Boogie Woogie for this design. I just love this font. Let's make Boo a bit bigger. I'm going to select Boo. I'm going to make that the orange color and then I'm going to select this is and sheet and change that to this pink. Going to make sure Boo is in the front. I'm going to grab all of this and group it and then come over here to make an offset. Click on apply. I'm going to right click and group that. I'm going to fill that in with black. Then I'm going to grab the offset and the letters, right click and group again. Now we can move this on to our blank spot and get it sized properly. I'm going to squish it a little bit this way and then scale it down. And I think that looks nice. Now at this point you have the white rectangle that is all the way in the back that's creating a seamless hole, if you will, from where we erased on the top layer here. You have the original PNG that we pulled in from Creative Fabrica, this magnificent ghost PNG with the skulls and the bats. I just absolutely love this. You have this layer here, which is the orange drip and then the lettering. I do see that this is not quite covering the edge here. I want to select that and pull it out just a bit to make sure that it goes all the way to the edge. That looks better. Now we can select all of this, right click, group it together, right click again, and flip it horizontally. At this point, I'm going to center it on my page and it is ready to print. Let's head up to File, Print, Always check your print preview to see how it's going to turn out. Make sure there's nothing that you want to change and then go ahead and click on print. Okay, we have the sublimation print. I have my craft knife and ruler for trimming the edges. I'm going to be using painter's tape today to secure the print to the tumbler. You do not have to have the heat tape. A lot of people prefer it. Either way is fine. I also have this glow in the dark tumbler. These are absolutely amazing. They turn out really neat. So what I'm going to do to start off is just trim the edges off of my paper. I always leave the one side intact. I do not trim the side at all. And the sides that I do trim, it's a little hard to see, but I always make sure that there is a little bit of color cut off. Now to wrap the tumbler, I always turn it upside down and make sure the print is upside down as well. That way it follows the rim of the cup perfectly and you know you have it on there straight. Now you want the side that you trimmed to touch the cup and you want the side that you did not trim to overlap that. And we're going to pull tight. And secure it with a piece of painter's tape. I like to use my scraper for this next part. Just go right along the seam and make a crease. One thing I have found with sublimating tumblers is that the thinner sublimation paper works better because you get a better seam. It folds better. 
there's less chance of air getting trapped in there. The next thing I do is wrap the entire cup with painter's tape. Some people say this is excessive, but this is how I get the best results. This always works for me every time. So I leave the flap and start just to the side of it and I just pull all the way around with even pressure and this smushes the air out of the wrap. Now you can see how much tighter that got. I start down at an angle and just keep applying even pressure as I go around. Now when you get to the bottom, you can overlap the tape and bring it down onto the bottom to make sure that the edges get pressed tight, or you can just leave it even with the paper. If you overlap it and push it onto the cup, if you push the tape onto the cup, you are going to get some residue that is kind of hard to get off. I use Goo Gone and it works okay um it, it's kind of a hassle though so i have just started making sure that the tape does not touch the bottom of the cup and it still works pretty well that is what the end result will look like after you tape it and you can see the seam here and this is the edge of the overlap. And you know it's wrapped tightly when that seam comes through. So at this point, there should be no ghosting at all. We're gonna toss this into the air fryer for seven minutes at 395 degrees. This has cooled down a little bit, not completely, so I still have my heat gloves on. Let's get this tape off and see how it did. It's easiest to start peeling the paper once you can see it. And just go right around the cup. These cups have a matte finish. I kind of like it. I'm used to the shiny finish on the regular tumblers, but this is pretty cool. The colors came out really nice on this. I love the pink and the orange together. Now we're going to let it soak up some light and watch it glow. If you found the information in this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up. It helps me out a ton. If you are looking for more tips and tricks on using Silhouette Studio for sublimation, you're going to want to watch this video next. Now go create something spooky and I'll see you in the next video.